Hello there, in this tip and trick video we're going to look at a typical process for simulating a gas sparging tank using ANSYS Fluent. Now this geometry I've got here is uh, a very simple representation of a, a gas sparging tank and you can see that I've only modelled the geometry up to where the, uh, the liquid level would be. So in reality we'd have the rest of the tank here, um, the gas would enter via an inlet at the base of the tank and the bubbles would rise through and they would exit via the free surface through uh, an outlet further up at the top of the tank. Um, ideally, we don't really want to have to model the free surface effects. That would make it a much larger simulation, uh, and more time consuming. So in Fluent, uh, we use something called a degassing boundary. Okay, so that's a particular type of boundary condition for uh, what is effectively the free surface of the liquid. So that's the surface I've selected there. And uh, if we look over to the left, uh, if you look at my boundary conditions, you can see that I've got the inlet, which is at the base of the tank. Um, this is actually a, a quarter symmetry model, so I've got a symmetry plane there. I've got the wall for the rest of the tank, and I've got a degassing boundary condition. Now, you can apply a degassing boundary condition to an external face. So, for example, if I just right-click on the wall, go to type, you can see you've got the degassing option right there. Um, to set up this kind of simulation, it's straightforward. It's a multi-phase simulation, so if we go to physics, uh, multi-phase, initially of course you would have to set the, uh, the material, so you can see I've got two materials here, air and uh, water liquid. So if we go to multi-phase, under models, you can see that I've set it to Eulerian. Uh, I've got two phases here, and the phases are primary phase is water liquid, secondary phase is air. And for the degassing boundary to work, uh, the primary phase must be the liquid phase. So the secondary phase is, is always your gas phase. Um, moving on to phase interaction, uh, you can see that I've got some models selected here. These models for, uh, for example, the drag coefficient, uh, lift coefficient, uh, there is guidance in the documentation. Uh, they're, they're applicable to certain types of physics. So for example, here I'm using the GRACE model for drag coefficient. Uh, if we have a look in the documentation, uh, you can see that this particular model is best suited or recommended for um, situations where bubbles have a, a range of, of different shapes, uh, such as spherical, elliptical, or cap. Um, but it's just a case of selecting the model that best represents your physics. Okay, so that's the, the physics setup, and uh, you can see the degassing boundary condition itself. Uh, if I open this up, there's actually nothing to enter in here. Um, all it does is uh, set up a condition where it prevents the liquid phase from exiting the domain, but it allows the gas phase to exit. So in other words, it's a simplification of a free surface. Um, it actually does this uh, effectively. Uh, the, the secondary phase sees it as a pressure outlet, and the primary phase sees it as a slip wall. Okay, um, another point to mention with the uh, the degassing boundary is that uh, to get it to actually permit the secondary phase to leave through the boundary, you do need to switch on gravity, put in your uh, gravitational vector here. Um, then we get on to running the simulation. I've actually already run this. This is a, as a transient here, so we can see some results. I've got a, a report for the mass flow rate of the gas phase through the degassing boundary. You can see it, uh, it's zero up to about two seconds and then the gas reaches the, uh, the degassing boundary and uh, we get the negative mass flow. And actually you can see here that I would need to run it on a little bit longer to, uh, to achieve a steady state. So let's have a look at the, uh, the results. And uh, I've just done a few animations here just to illustrate the simulation. So this is the secondary gas phase you can see rising from the inlet, and as it gets to the degassing boundary, um, it exits the domain. Okay, and if you look at the velocity vectors for the liquid phase, you can see the behavior at the degassing boundary is identical to what it would be if it were a slip wall. Okay, so the liquid phase is being prevented from, uh, from leaving the domain. The gas phase is, uh, is permitted to exit. Okay, so that's uh, a very simple demonstration of uh, what a degassing boundary can do. 
Um, the primary application, of course, uh, being uh, bubble column reactors, and it just saves you having to uh, take into account the free surface and uh, makes this type of application much, much simpler um, to run in ANSYS Fluent. So I hope you found this uh, tip and trick video useful, and thank you for watching.